Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Okay, cool. One second. Okay, let's get started. Sorry about that. So um, today I'll be teaching you guys about conditions and loops. So conditions and loops are very, very, very important. So if at any point you guys are confused about what I'm saying, um, you can go ahead and just ask me and I'll try and explain it better. So yeah, okay. So a very brief intro first. So conditions are just statements that are either true or false. Um, they help with the logic flow of the program. And, and most commonly used in if slash then statements. Yes, that is true. That is the definition of insanity. So an example is shown here. Um, if you don't quite get the syntax here, it's fine but just mainly look at what's in the parentheses. So this is just a condition. And next we have loops. So loops is just the repetition of the same thing or instructions until a certain condition is either true or false, depending on what you want. So here is an example of a while loop. And um, yeah, so this is just a very brief intro. I'll be getting into like the syntax and the other uses of stuff. Uh, later on. Okay. So first, conditions. So like I said before, very fundamentally, a condition is just something that is either true or false. So for example, this slideshow was procrastinated. This is true. Programming is cool. That is also true. Or for some of you guys, that's false. But um, anyways, five is equal to four um, is false. Now this is also a condition because um, conditions don't necessarily have to always be true. They can be false as well. So this is also a condition. And finally, for the last one, um, wait, I can annotate. Wait, my bad, okay. And finally, for the last one, it is raining outside. Um, this is interesting because it, it could be either true or false. It, it depends because, oh, well, I think it's interesting person because it depends on, well, whether or not it's raining outside. And if it is raining, then this would be true. Otherwise this would be false. So in programming, um, a lot of your conditions are gonna be like this one because it's, yeah, so, so yeah, exactly. So right now this would actually evaluate to uh, false. But yeah, so when so in programming, um, a lot of your conditions aren't always going to be true or false. And so depending on the state of things, your program is going to do different things depending on these conditions. So like I said, conditions, they dictate the logic flow and decision-making of programs. Uh, let me erase this. All right, so 
for example, if we look at this example, it is raining outside. Um, if it's raining outside, then you probably want to bring an umbrella. And if it's not raining outside, then there would be no need to bring an umbrella. So this is like the point of a condition. Does, does everything so far make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, like I said, programs in general will do different things based on different conditions. Now, now how, yeah, exactly, yeah. Victor, you are correct. So, for example, so how, so how do programs actually decide what to do and how do they actually check conditions? So they use something called the if-else statement. So the basic structure of an if-else statement is shown here. So you use, um, use the keyword if, use the keyword if here, then you use parentheses to mark your condition. So any, so everything inside your parentheses is gonna be your condition. And then you use curly braces to show like the block of code that you run, you want to run if this condition is true. Yeah, yeah. These are very common in programming and they're very, very useful because it allows your code to have like different options. So you can do different things based on different conditions. Yeah, so if this condition here is not met, however, it will go to this else block and it will do whatever is inside the curly braces of the else block. Yeah, so a specific example of that. Oh, sorry. So yeah, so here's a visual representation. Um, if condition A is met, then it will go down to this block and it will execute what, whatever B is. If it's false, then it will do whatever C is. So a specific example here. So for example, if we wanted to make a game where the computer generates a random number and asks the user to guess it, in order to check if the user guessed the number correctly, we can just use an if statement, right? If the user guess is equal to what we randomly generated, we tell them that it's correct. Yeah, we'll get to while loops later. I'm pretty sure I got that from Wikipedia. If, it, if I didn't, then uh, that's kind of awkward, but I'm pretty sure I did. All right, so the else if statement. So the else if statement allows, so without the else if statement, we only have two different like quote unquote branches to our if else statement, right? We either do this or we do this. But with the else if statement, this allows us to add another branch to our decision making. So in other words, if some condition one is met, then we will go to this branch. However, if this condition is not met, then we'll look at whatever is in the else if statement. So if whatever is in the else if statement is met, then we will do, so let's say if, if condition one is met, we do A. If condition one is not met, then we look at condition two. And if condition is two is if condition two is met, then we'll do something, say B, right? But if condition two is not met, then we'll finally go to this else block and we'll do C. So does this make sense? Like, does the structure of like the else if statement make sense? Okay. Cool. So an example of this, again, if we wanted to make our game guessing or our number guessing, if we wanted to tell the user if our guess is too, if their guess is too low or too high, we can just use an if and else if statement. So if it's less than the actual number, we tell them it's too low. If it's not less than the actual number, but it's actually greater than, then we tell them it's too high. And if it's neither too less nor if it's neither less than nor greater than, then that means it has to be equal. So we tell them that their guess is correct. Yeah. 
so far very simple. All right, so another way you can, so something with the syntax is if and only if there's only one line in your condition or in your, um, in like the code that you want to run for some condition, you can get rid of the curly braces. But in general, this isn't recommended because it's like harder to read and harder to understand. Because if you have the curly braces, it's like very obvious, like what you're going to run if a certain condition is true. But if you don't have that, if you use curly braces, or if you don't use curly braces, then it becomes slightly unclear. So in general, I don't recommend doing this. But but you can if you want. What do you mean can run a program teacher? Okay, moving on. <laughs> so I have two exercises here and then you guys can try them out. Oh, you want me to run something? Okay. Oh, well, okay. Here's, yeah, so for this first example. Oh, you guys want me to, okay, here. So one second, let me share a different screen. Okay, so uh, I just have a file here. So this is C line, if you guys are wondering. So for example, if we go to slides, so for this one, we have int x is equal to one, y is equal to five, and z is equal to 10. And then if x is less than y, then yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot. Using namespace std. Then else. Now, yeah, B. Yeah, C. All right, so what do you guys think this will output? All right, I'm seeing a lot of AAAs. So intuitive, intuitively, that would make sense, right? But however, like I explained before, when you see that there's no bra uh, curly braces with your else statements, it actually means it only runs the first line after. Exactly. So then it's A, 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 and then C, 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 C. Yeah, with the new line. Because X is indeed less than Y. So I'll print this out. And this won't be true. So I'll print out this as well, because this is outside of the if else statement. Yeah, so if we were to just run it. Yeah. Here you can see it prints out A, 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 C, C, C. Yeah. So that, that's why in general, I recommend that you include the curly braces. Cause like, for example, here, we just saw a lot of people thought it would be just a, a, a. So it's like really unclear without the curly braces, like what exactly is inside your condition or what exactly you're trying to execute if the condition is satisfied. So, yeah.
Uh -huh. So let's say you wanted to check a, a certain condition only if some other condition is satisfied. So for example, are my parents sleeping? If they are, then should I play video games? The answer is no, you should get sleep. But let's say I wanted to do that, right? Then we would use something called nested if statements. So nested if statements are basically just if statements inside of other if statements. Does this make sense? Yes? Yes, okay, cool. So a visual representation. Let me actually unfold. Yeah. So here's a visual representation. Um, as you can tell, there's an if statement here inside another if statement. Yeah. So the code is very simple. It's just you have an if statement inside of another if statement. All right, so the next topic I'll be explaining are logic operators. So logic operators are based, they basically allow us to kind of merge two conditions depending on the inputs. Yeah, so some of you guys might have already seen this before. So the first so the first logic operator I'll be talking about is the AND operator. So the AND operator, basically, if you take two conditions and you take the AND of them, you'll get a different output depending on what your conditions are. So for example, if both your conditions that you're taking the AND of are true, then your result will be true. If one of them is true and the other is false, then you'll get false. Yeah, and or not. I'll get to or and not later. And if false and true, then the output is false. And if they're both false, then the and operator will output false. Yeah, so one way to remember this is um, both A and B have to be satisfied in order for the and of them to be true. So next, the or operator, also very simple. Um, you have two conditions, true and true. It outputs true. True and false, instead of outputting false, this time it outputs true. And same thing with false and true. And only when they're both false does it output false. So one way to remember this is either A, or B is true. So do, do these two make sense? The AND and OR operators? Okay. Finally, we have probably the simplest operator, the NOT operator, uh, and only functions on one condition. So the NOT operator is signified by the exclamation mark. And it simply just flips the flips the condition. So if it's true, it'll output false. If it's false, it'll output true. Yeah, very simple. So there are some other logical operators that I won't really be going over because they're not as prominent and they're not as like common, but there's like the n and or the not and, there's the xor, and there's like a whole bunch of other stuff like not xors. And then um, I believe there's NORs and there's all sorts of other stuff. But yeah, XORs are commonly used in encryption and RNG. So, and XORs in competitive programming is also pretty um, relevant. But for now, um, just mainly focus on OR and AND because those two are like, and NOT, because those three are like the main ones that you'll be probably seeing more of. Okay, a couple of exercises for you guys to try out. These are three separate ones, by the way, so.
Do you guys want to try and guess in the chat? All right, let's 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 take a look at the first one first. False, true, false. Hmm. False, true, true. All right, let's do this together. Okay, so x is greater than y. This is obviously false because x, because one is, as a matter of fact, not greater than five. So we know this is false. Z is less than y. We also know this is false. And so because both of them are false, the OR operator will return false. So Y less than Z and X less than Y, both of these are true because five is less than 10 and one is less than five. So that means this returns true because and only returns true if both are true. And finally, the last one. Oh, Victor. Would you like to say something? Oh, <laughs> no, the, the other Victor. Someone raised their hand. Hmm? I saw someone raise their hand on my end. Victor? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I guess it was just an accident. Okay. No, no, he put it down. All right. Finally, we have the last one. So y greater than z, this is false. But we take the not of it, so this is true. And then x less than y, this is also true. But we take the not of it, so this is false. However, the OR operator, as long as one of them is true, it'll return true. So yeah, the answer is false, true, true. Do all these make sense? Like all three examples make sense? Okay. Cool. Then we'll move on. So yeah, false, true, true. Uh -huh. You guys try this one. Take your time. What does this output? Yeah, yeah, you guys are right. Yeah, it doesn't output anything because 100 is not greater than 100. So this condition will not be satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Error. <laughs> Where's the error? Where do you see the error? I don't think this outputs anything wrong. Well, actually, Timothy, technically it doesn't output blank spaces. It just doesn't output anything at all. So technically speaking, you know, yeah. All right, next slide. All right, so this one is slightly harder. Um, it takes slightly more time. Just just a, just a little bit more time. But yeah, if you can if you can show this, then I'll be I'll be very proud of you. I don't know. Do you? 33 minutes? Hmm. I'll give you three minutes. <laughs> Good luck.
I, I wouldn't really say distributive property. It's, it's very similar, but not quite. The or symbol, the or symbol is two, oops, two vertical lines. So on your keyboard, it's like the key above your return or enter button. Yeah. All right, what if I go over this one? Okay, so let's draw our table. So we have X, Y. So I'll only be proving one of them because the other one I'm sure you guys can do by yourself. So let's say if both X and Y are true. So if X and Y are true, yeah, then it'll be false. This will be false. Oops, because this will be true. So you take the not of it. So this will be false. Yeah, and both of these will be false. So if both of them are true, this holds, right? So what about true false? Well, if X is true and Y is false, then that means this will evaluate to false. So the left side will be, so the left side will be true. Over here on the right side, not X is false, but not Y is true. And because one of them is true, so this entire thing will also be true. Very wide T's. What do you mean by take away the knots? X and Y is equal to X or Y. But that's not necessarily true, right? X and Y equals to X or Y? But what if X is true and Y is false? Then X and Y is, wait, X and Y is false. Not X and not Y equals to X or Y. But isn't that also disproven by true and false? Right? Because not X is false, not Y is true. So if you take the and of that, yeah. Okay, yeah, but if so, okay, so back, back, back to this. So if you have both are false, then if both are false, then this side will be true and this side will also be true. So yeah, that, so we basically proved this for like all combinations of true and false. And then the other one you can prove similarly, you just try all possibilities of true and false for X and Y. Yeah, case work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hate casework too, trust me. <laughs> it, it's pretty painful. What is the website? Oh, um, I can send a link to it here. Oh, sorry. No, don't worry, it's not Rickroll. I would never Rickroll. I am, I am a mature person most of the time. Yeah, the other the other slide was Wikipedia, but this one is a different um, different place. It, it's it's pretty useful if you're confused about any of this.
Mm. Most of the time. I'll leave that up for you to interpret. Anyways, all right, moving on. So what do you mean you got Rickrolled? <laughs> all right, next we have loops. So loops are also very important because they allow us to do most of the time equals sometimes. Hmm. I'd say slightly more than sometimes. Sometimes slightly less. Oh, okay. Good luck with dinner. So loops. So what is a loop? Loops just basically allow you to repeat the same thing over and over until some condition is met or some condition is no longer met. And they're useful. And they're useful because it allows us to avoid things like this. Because um, I don't think you want to print out hello manually 3,097 times. <laughs> you guys should do your homework early. More than that, you want me? <laughs> Yeah, so basically for loops allow us to condense all of this 3,097 lines pretty much into three lines. So there's two main types of looping. I think there's actually only two types. If there's more, I haven't learned them yet. So, so the first type, why is saying hello? To, okay, so saying hello 3,000 times isn't useful. Unless you're getting ignored, then maybe it is useful. But in general, for loops are more useful because you can do other types of things 3,000 times. <laughs> yeah, like, like let's say you wanted to like, oh, so like let's say you wanted to tell a bunch of people hello, then you can just make a for loop and then say hello that many times instead. So it's not directly useful in this case, but it has other uses. All right, so there's mainly two types of looping. So the first type is the for loop. So this is the basic structure of a for loop. So here we have your initializing statement. The next segment is the condition for looping. And then the last part is incrementing your looping variable or updating your looping variable. And then again, we use the curly braces to show the segment of code that we want to run. So a specific example is here. So if I wanted to print the first 10 numbers, for example, then I have so I initialize i to zero. So initially i is zero. Then my condition for looping is i is less than 10. So as long as i, the quantity in i is less than 10, I will keep looping. And then plus plus i, have you guys seen this before? Plus plus i. Yeah, to add one. Yeah, it's it's the same thing as i plus equals to one, or i is equal to i plus one. Yeah. What do you mean Java pin? Okay, I agree that Java is a bad language. Okay, okay, that's no, I didn't say that. I, that, I, that was a joke, but I but you can use this in C plus plus too. Personally, I use this because it's actually slightly faster than i plus plus. But yeah, anyways, so as long as i is less than 10, then we're going to keep printing out i. So we end up printing out the first 10 numbers. Why what? Okay. So another example here is this. So what do you guys what do you guys think this prints out?
one to ten. Fifty-five. Yeah, exactly. Fifty-five. Yeah. Or if you're fancy and using big boy words, sure, triangular. Are you guys sure it's fifty-five? Though? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Victor's right. It's 45. Yeah. Because i starts at zero and i is less than 10. So it's going to print out zero plus one plus all the way to plus nine. Yeah, so this is just nine times eight over two, which is 45. Yeah. So you guys have to be careful with what your initial value is and what your uh, looping condition is. Because if it was one here, and if this was less than or equal to 10, then you'd be right, it'd be 55. But yeah, in this case, it's a zero here and it's less than, so. Wait, I didn't mean nine times eight. Wait, my bad, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I meant 10 times 9, 10 times 9, my bad, my bad. You're right. So yeah, the answer is 45, not 55. All right, try yourself. Print out all the odd numbers. Victor, would you like to say something? No, okay. So does anyone want to try this? Printing out all the odd numbers between one and 10, or one and 11. Inclusive, inclusive. Not me. Mm. You should try it. Yeah, that's what you want to print out. But how do you write that in code? Yeah, OK. Yeah, what Victor said is correct. So that's one way to do it. So what Victor said is one way to do it, because we initially have i is equal to 1. Our condition is i is less than or equal to 11. And then you increment i by 2. Oh, don't worry. I, I can call you next time. I have another example later on. You get to do that one. So yeah, this prints out all the odd numbers. Another way you can actually do this is to print out all the numbers from 0 to 5, except you multiply it by 2 to make it from 0 to 10. But that only prints out all the even numbers from 0 to 10 but you want all the not odd numbers. So you add one to make it odd. So yeah, it, it's very flexible. There's multiple different ways you can do it. Is that actually faster? No, it's not. Because you're still, on, you're still iterating, um, what, six times? So how many slides do I have? A lot of slides, oh, of five, yeah. Well, if you're using big O notation, it'd probably be more accurate to say O of one because five is just a constant, so. Or O of N, if there's N numbers. O of N. All right, so we've covered the for loop. So next we have the while loop. Have you guys heard of the while loop before? I assume you guys have. I think I saw you guys before talking about it. Yeah, OK. So this is the basic structure of the while loop. You use the keyword while. And then while some condition is true, then we keep iterating and doing this something. 
So yeah, very simple, very simple. So again, a specific example, if we wanted to talk about, yeah, like saying hello to people. Yeah, so a specific, a specific example here, we have while the user guess is not the actual number, we just keep asking the user to keep guessing. So yeah, this is our condition here. And then this is the segment of code we run while this condition is not true or not satisfied. However, this won't actually run if the user guesses the number correctly first try, right? Because it's just gonna, because immediately this isn't going to be satisfied. So it won't do what's ever in here. So instead we, we use something called the do while loop. Have you guys heard of the do while loop? How do you type in Chinese? By using do while loops. Do you guys know how to use do while loops? Yes, no, no. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of notes. Okay, so this is probably new for a lot of you guys because honestly, it's very irrelevant. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to use this, to be honest. But it's basically just a normal while loop, except what it does, I'll, I'll explain in a bit. What it does is it ensures that the block of code that you're trying to run runs at least once. So here's here's the syntax. So you actually use the keyword do, and then you put the while condition afterwards. So what this does is it ensures that you run this code and then it checks the condition. And if the condition is true or is not true, then it will break out of it. So does this make sense? You guys get what a do while loop does? Yes? Sort of, yeah. Is there any part that's confusing? All right, if not, then I'll move on. So another way we can do this is something called the break statement. Um, not the so a break statement, basically all it does is that you can see here, this is the break statement. If you ever get to the break statement, what it does is it goes outside of the loop. So let's say we keep iterating through this until we get to this statement. Then once we get to the break, we just simply break out of the while loop. Does that make sense? Do we need to include break? Like, do you mean like an include statement? There's no include statement for break. You can just use it. It's like, yeah, so it's, it's, it's like, it's a keyword. So you can't make, you can't call any variables break either, but you can just directly use it. So do break. Um, I don't know why you do that. Honestly, I don't think there's any real use for do while loops because you can do whatever you can do. You can use a while loop for a do while loop. So, yeah. All right, so try yourself. Print out all the odd numbers again, but this time with a while loop. Do we have any brave volunteers? All right, Victor, do you want to try it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Actually, here, I'll, I'll, I'll do what you say. So you have int i equals to one.
And then what, Victor? Well, I less than or equal to 11. I equals I plus two. Hmm. But where do you actually print out I? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, what you said is correct. Yeah, very, very simple. So I'm guessing you guys all understand this. Yep, okay, cool. So yeah, pretty exactly what Victor said. All right, very cool. Again, another way you can do this is using continue statements, which are very similar to break statements, except instead of like completely exiting your loop, you only skip one iteration of it. So for example, here, if I, so if we wanted to print all the odd numbers, what we can do is we can just iterate through everything, except we skip the even numbers by using a continue. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. So when to use what? So in general, they're like pretty much always exchangeable. You can use, you can do what you can do with a while loop using a for loop, and you can do what you can do with a for loop using a while loop. But in general, you want to use a for loop mainly when the number of iterations you want to do is known beforehand, like before you start looping. But you can always, but you can also use a for loop as a while loop. It's just you set your initial conditions to empty, so to nothing, and you set your incrementing thing to nothing as well. So you have to make sure you change x inside your loop, because otherwise it'll run forever. But yeah, in general, you don't want to use it this way because you might as well just use a while loop. So yeah. And then while loops, they're slightly more flexible because you can update your looping variable at any time in the loop. So you can do it in the middle of the loop, like here. And you can also do it depending on certain conditions. So for example, if I wanted to make x, goes to, x go towards 0, if x is less than 0, I can increment it. If it's greater than zero, then I can decrement it. So yeah, those are basically when you'd want to use a for loop versus a while loop. But yeah, in general, you can just exchange them. It's yeah. All right, you guys try this one. What does the following print? Abs. Absolute value, yes. Not, not the other abs. So what do you guys think this prints out? <laughs> Mine. Abs, abs is just absolute value. Just absolute value of x. Or y minus x. Sorry. Yeah. 97531. Interesting. Are you guys sure? Yeah, yeah. What well, Alexander you said is correct. Yeah, so it's basically a while true. This because this condition will actually never be met. So yeah, yeah. So it's just gonna keep going on forever and ever. Does everyone see why? Why this is true? Like why this will never be met. Why is why? 
do you guys see like how this will always like continually infinite loop? Yeah, yeah. So they will never be equal to each other. Yeah. All right, cool. So common issues with while looping. So um, like Victor said, you don't want to have infinite loops because that's not good. So you always want to make sure your condition is reasonable. So like it's a condition that you can reach computer crash or in some cases your computer turns into like a heater. It's not very healthy. So you always want to make sure your condition will eventually be met. So like if your condition is X is less than zero, but you only increment zero, then bad things happen, right? Yeah, if you do get an infinite loop, you can do control C to stop running the code. So yeah. So you always wanna make sure you have a reasonable condition. You always wanna make sure you're updating your loop variable correctly as well. Because if you're not, then, well, if you don't, then your condition will probably never be met. So this could include um, forgetting to update your looping variable, updating the wrong variable, or forgetting to break. So yeah, always make sure that basically this. Yeah, make sure your looping condition will be met. All right, nested loops. So nested loops are basically the same as nested if statements. It's just a loop inside of another loop. So for example, this, you can see here we have a for loop inside of another for loop. So this is just, so this just prints out. Yeah, it's good for matrices or basically array of arrays, which you guys will learn later, I'm sure. Yeah. So another example is this. We Here we have a for loop inside of a while loop. And this just prints out um, like a formatted version of like the days, so. Yeah. All right, you guys try this one. Preferably someone other than just Victor. What does this output? My feel it's not targeted, I swear. It's just because I I'm yeah. I want others to also participate. So does anyone else want to try? One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Well, there's only one print, right? We only print something once. 15, zero. Hmm. Well, actually, this is another one of my trick questions. It doesn't actually print anything out. Because J is never actually incremented. We only increment I. And because J is equal to zero, J will always be less than five. So we will never leave this loop. Yeah, so you guys have to be careful. J looks like I, yeah, I, I'm kind of evil like that. Don't worry about it though. So yeah, you guys always wanna make sure that um, you're incrementing the right variable and so avoid something like this. So does this make sense? Does like anything that I talked about today not make sense? No? 
everything? Oh no. <laughs> if not, it makes sense. All right, cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much everything I have today. Uh, and we have three minutes left, but I have one more thing. So there's this website called Code Forces. <laughs> you guys don't have to actually do all of these, but I think it's interesting. And I recommend you guys try at least some of them. Code Forces is hard. Yeah, Code Forces is hard. But I try to choose some relatively easier questions. Like, for example, this one. Send in chat. Oh, I got you guys. Yeah, all of the questions I've sent here, or I have here, you can do with um, with just conditions and for loops alone. I see Rick will. I would never be that cruel. I'm a nice person. That did not. I'm. Hmm. You see the smiley face? Like, doesn't this just look very innocent? Would Andrew? Andrew would very much agree with that statement. Andrew would very much agree with that statement. Do I do Yusuka? Yes, I do do Yusuka. It, it's Yusuka is pretty interesting. Competitive programming in general is pretty interesting. Um, the nice part is that you can like ignore all the rules that you've learned. So like bad coding habits become very normal stuff. Yes, I'm in plot. Well, everyone has to start somewhere. So as long as you practice, it's fine. No, Andrew, Andrew deserves plant. Andrew is more ores than me. From silver to gold? Silver to gold, I think, took a year. Gold to plat took three. So what grade am I? Um I'm I'm, what grade am I? That's a great question. I'm a rising junior, yeah. Rising junior. When did I start this? Okay, uh, I started Yusuko in sixth grade. So I've been doing it for like a long, long time. Oh yeah, if you guys don't have any other questions about, you're in sixth grade, don't worry. It, it, the thing with you, if you guys don't have any questions, you guys can go. But if you guys want to chat for a little longer, um, fourth grade, wow, you guys start early. But yeah, sixth grade. Um, oh, you actually started earlier than me. Wow. Yeah, you guys all have like really early starts. Don't say that. The thing with Yusuko is like in the beginning, it's like kind of hard. Yeah, a lot of people say that, that they wish they started early. But yeah, in the beginning, it's like, it's hard. But once you like start like learning more stuff, it, it gets more interesting. Third grade. Yeah, you guys are all really, really young. Wow. <laughs> You feel old, I feel old. <laughs> I'm like three times your grade level. Hmm? Around, around, oh, come on. Yeah, you guys can leave if you want. Bye bye. No, you're right. Four times. No, actually, four times three is two. Four times three is two. Occasionally it's 12, but, but most of the time it's two.
Yeah, on a good day, on a good day. But not very, not very young. Bye bye. What is 29 times 14? I got you. Don't look at my screen. Don't look at my screen. Don't look at my 406. 406. Yep. That was all mental math. <laughs> Siri, wait, that's true. I don't like using Siri though. I don't know. <laughs> Calculate graphs. New. Okay, the thing. Goodbye. Bye bye. The thing. The thing with code forces is um, code forces is too early. Yeah, it is pretty hard. I'm I don't my my code forces rating isn't very high. How does ranking for code forces work? So basically there's like a rating system and depending on like how difficult. So when you do problems, it counts for how fast you do them and how many you do. And so basically depending on your rank, then you'll get a different amount of rating points. Harder than grinding full <laughs> Yes, yes, slightly harder. Does it correspond roughly to China? Um, kind of, yes. But I think in chess, there's a lot more like 600 rated people. Whereas in code forces, like, would be more around like 1,200, I guess, around there. Uh, what's my rating? Okay, we don't talk about my rating. Personally, we don't talk about my, uh, the recording of the meeting, I think you can ask Andrew. I think you can ask Andrew and he'll have a recording of this. Well, I should probably stop recording by the way. <laughs> said YouTube, but you don't know. Here, I'll stop sharing my screen first. Um, I actually don't know the channel either, but um, do you guys have a Discord? Yes. Do you want to friend me on Discord? I can send you the recording of this video. Uh, my tag is just, I sent it in chat. Yes, plus no equals yeah. Okay, let me stop recording.